Emperor Naruhito of Japan says managing the Olympics and pandemic precautions has not been easy. COVID cases in Tokyo have surged more than 155% in the last week, and protesters are now calling for the games to be canceled entirely. ABC's Amy Robach has the latest. This morning, as COVID cases are ticking up in Tokyo, more Olympic athletes benched, at least 91 people testing positive in the Olympic bubble. Precaution driving USA Gymnastics to a bold move, overnight confirming to ABC News that Team USA Gymnasts will not be staying in Olympic Village for the duration of the Games. Cecile Landy, coach to Simone Biles, saying on Twitter the move was made together, adding that they feel like we can control the athletes and our safety better in a hotel setting. This, as on Wednesday, Team USA beach volleyball player Taylor Crabb was forced to drop out of the games following a positive test. Crabb writing on Instagram, after taking every precaution, getting vaccinated, and following protocols, I have tested positive for COVID-19. I'm symptom-free, thankfully, but deeply disappointed. Crabb now isolating at a hotel in Japan joins a growing list of U.S. athletes forced to withdraw, including tennis great Coco Goff, women's basketball player Katie Lou Samuelson, and Kara Aker, an alternate on the women's gymnastics team. Two international athletes also dropping out Wednesday after contracting COVID before traveling to the Games, including U.K. athlete Amber Hill, the number one ranked skeet shooter in the world, and Russian swimmer Ilya Borodin. Reality setting in for the opening ceremony. One producer telling Reuters the ceremony, which is usually a celebratory spectacle, will instead be a much more sobering ceremony, but incorporate beautiful Japanese aesthetics. Due to social distancing rules, the stadium will be mostly empty, with no family or spectators in the stadium chairs. No mass choreography, and not all athletes will be present for the Parade of Nations. Now, just 24 hours away, more controversy casting a cloud over the event. The show director, Kentaro Kobayashi, was fired for resurfaced anti-Semitic jokes he made about the Holocaust in 1998. This just days after the ceremony's composer resigned following resurfaced incidents of bullying people with disabilities. But for athletes who have trained their entire lives for this, the game's already in full swing. USA women's softball now 2-0, dominating against Canada in a stunning upset, not allowing a single point on the board. A golden performance from three-time world champion Monica Abbott going seven scoreless innings. Overnight, First Lady Jill Biden touched down here in Tokyo as she stepped off the plane. She was greeted by Japanese officials without any handshakes. She is meeting with the Japanese Prime Minister now just hours ahead of her scheduled participation in the opening ceremonies. Diane? All right, Amy Robach in Tokyo, thank you. And let's go to ABC's Kenneth Moten, who's also live for us in Tokyo with more on this. Kenneth, what does it say about the Olympic COVID protocols that the U.S. gymnastics team thinks they'll be safer in a hotel? Well, Diane, it says they don't trust those COVID protocols in this country, and they feel that, yes, they will be safer in a hotel and they will be able to control the environment there because they're seeing what's happening not only with the Olympics, but also what's happening in Tokyo. The Olympics has seen more than 90 cases connected to these games of COVID positive cases. And here in Tokyo, there have been a daily high of hovering around 2,000 new daily COVID cases. And so you've got Simone Biles who actually spoke out about this on Twitter. She said, um, she, we all know she's one of the most watched uh, gymnasts and one of the most watched athletes in this world. And she said that on Twitter, the decision, the decision was made because it was felt that the team's safety could be controlled better in a hotel setting due to the ongoing pandemic. We know that these athletes need to focus on the games, not possible infection. And I will say, Diane, that I had a chance to see Simone Biles and her teammates, Team USA Gymnastics, uh, training today. Uh, it was incredible. And it also reminds you what likely the Olympic organizers are thinking when it comes to the negative headlines with these games, that once you see these athletes perform, it kind of takes you away from thinking about the pandemic and thinking about COVID because they are quite talented and it was just incredible to see them. And uh, Kenneth, we also now know that U.S. beach volleyball player Taylor Crabb is out after testing positive for COVID. How big of a hit is that to Team USA? Well, we don't know what impact it will have on the game of his teammate and the replacement athlete uh, when they play this weekend. But we know 
there's a hit emotionally, uh, mentally, for these athletes. And Taylor Crabb, I know Amy Robot gave you a little bit of what his Instagram post said, but he said, look, that this hurts, uh, that a lot went into him training, that um, this is tough on him mentally. Uh, he says this stings also. And we know that with his relationship and with his playing partner, what that meant to him as well. And so now he says his new role will be a supporting role as he cheers them on. Now, the IOC released some new guidelines for when and where athletes can express their views, saying expressions are not permitted during official ceremonies, during competition on the field of play, or in the Olympic Village. But at the U.S. Yeah. women's soccer team's first game against Sweden, both teams took a knee to protest against racism. So what is allowed, and what happens if an athlete breaks those rules? Well, the IOC has relaxed those rules on what they call Rule 50. Uh, they have been controversial for years because, as we know, athletes and activism really go hand in hand, and they have gone hand in hand over the past few decades or so, especially as the Olympic Games have gone on. But the IOC says uh, these protest rules were relaxed after the killing of George Floyd. But there's been, uh, as I mentioned, this controversy there that they had to handle this situation. And so even though the IOC says this all protects the neutrality of sport at the Olympic Games and kept the rule largely intact, after surveying those athletes, the IOC will allow athletes to express their views when speaking to the media at the games, at the venues, at team meetings, on social media, and on the field of play at certain times. If the rules are violated, Diane, what we've seen before is a some type of disciplinary letter and also uh, some type of lengthy probation that could happen. Uh, we don't know the exact disciplinary that could happen or discipline that could happen if someone violates the rules here in Tokyo, but that's what's happened in the past. It's one of those things where when it happens and if there's a violation, we will see. But again, when it comes to athletes and activism, it's something that has gone hand in hand. All right. Kenneth Moten for us in Tokyo. Kenneth, great to see you as always. Thank you. Hi everyone, George Stephanopoulos here. Thanks for checking out the ABC News YouTube channel. If you'd like to get more videos, show highlights, and watch live event coverage, click on the right over here to subscribe to our channel. And don't forget to download the ABC News app for breaking news alerts. Thanks for watching.